Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for our very last set review, The Monastery of Spinjitsu. So I have this set, so I'm actually providing real footage, and this will be a more in-depth set review compared to some of the past ones. And yeah, so we're keeping all the same categories from the past video, from the past videos, I mean, and we're also adding in the accuracy category that will come back for this specific set review since the monastery has actually been rebuilt into the show. With all that being said, let's get started. So I'm going to split up the design section into two parts. We have the gate outside here, and then next we will be taking a look at the actual monastery itself. So I really like this arch. It's definitely kind of thin, and it uses thin pieces, but it does look really cool, and I like this gong especially. They use circular doors in this as well, with each door actually being a semicircle, and I think the attention to detail on this is really cool, with these jagged spikes, as well as these one stud pieces, and I like the different colors as well. You have your darker red on the outside, and then more vivid red on the inside. Also, I want to point out these, sphere, these spears. I think these are really cool details as well. And then the roof area right here, it's very similar to the actual monastery's roof, which we'll take a look at later. And I think that is pretty cool. You have studs on one, every alternating piece is, has studs. And then you have a smooth piece here. And I think that it makes for a pretty cool design. We also have these hanging lantern-like pieces also, which are pretty prominent throughout the set. And I think that, again, the attention to detail is really cool. We also have these kind of jagged rock pieces, these sloped rock pieces throughout the outside. And I think that those small little details are also cool as well. And it's kind of flat and hollow on this side if I position it right this, like, right like this. And it actually on the back side there is one of the monastery murals, so we'll take a look at that soon. And on this side there also is actually a little tree, and I think that's really cool. It's a nice little contrast from the rest of the colors, which are pretty much black and red. You have a nice little pink and white contrast, and I think that looks really cool, and it looks very serene. Now on the back, we have some more accessories, and again, taking a look at this, I like these staff pieces, and then our longer staff pieces. Nice attention to detail, really. And if I move this out of the way, we also have our monastery murals from the Legacy Wave, from the Legacy Mini episodes, and I think the attention to detail is really cool. These sticker pieces are actually... Very nice looking. Now we have a typical training stand right here. So that looks pretty cool. I like what they've done with it. And you can actually swing it out from side to side. It does look pretty cool and the design is nice with these uh, circular pieces on the bottom and their blades on the top. Over here it's a bit weird. It's kind of, I think it's a reference to the Masterclass episode in which the ninja were chopping up fruit. But it is a little bit weird actually. It starts like this where you have this uh, this exclamation point and then it swings like this not really sure why the fruits are there Yeah, it is a bit weird, but uh, it's cool nevertheless, and I also like this little plan detail as well It's nothing too much, but it does look pretty cool Now the monastery itself is truly quite amazing I love these red pillars throughout the bottom area and also again the details is really cool Especially these things not really sure how to describe them, but I think the detail is very very cool and I also like these hilt pieces as well, these hilt pieces here. Those are quite cool. Again, there are still these lantern-like pieces, and that does look pretty cool. But there are actually quite a bit of play features throughout this that we will take a look at. The first of which, and before I actually t examine this, I really like this dresser and this little bonsai or little plant here. It looks really cool. I think the, um, the design for this dresser is very cool. And we, if we spin this around, we actually get the Sword of Fire. So I think that's a nice little play feature. And then in the middle section, we have Wu's tea, and that's a really cool reference to the pilot episodes when, of course, he was drinking tea. I like these banners with the symbols as well. And if you open this, there's actually a switch on, there's a little th toggle switch on the back in which this thing will move. Not really sure what the point of this is, but it's fine, I guess. And then next, we do have our uh, side of quakes and the nunchucks of lightning, which I really like the redesigns for these. They look very cool with the dragon moon blade hilt. And if you actually push this down, the doors will open and this chicken piece, this has got to be a reference to that Lego Ninjago movie, Master Wu with the chicken short. Anyway, this chicken piece, not really sure why it's a chicken piece other than that reference, will swing forward and these doors will actually open. And again, I really love the door, de the, the door de details Excuse me, as well. I think they really hold true to the original monastery and in the show, and they look very cool as well. Mm. Now, we're going to move one layer up to the roof. And the roof is a lot like the outer gate, 
but it's actually different. I really like these spike pieces, these um, pieces that we actually did get for the Tread Assault and other Ninjago builds as well. These pieces are cool as well. They use this piece, which is typically used for the fingers of a mech, and it's featured throughout this set a lot, and I think these little designs look very cool. And I really love the gold and black. It's just it's just gold and black on the roof, really, and I think that does look cool. These stud details are also very nice as well. Now, taking a look up here, the sticker is actually transparent, and on the back, we can actually see the shuriken device, and I will take a look at the back suit. And if you move up another layer, these banners are actually in the show, which is quite cool. And I really like how this is very accurate to the show, actually. And up here, we do have a little piece up here. And I think that looks really cool. Now, we're going to move on over to the back, actually. And there is some stuff to look at at the back as well. And we have the shurikens of ice here. And I think the stand is pretty cool. You can see one through the window and one is in the back. And back here, we have that switch which did activate the spinning blade in the stairs. And even the back, I think it looks pretty cool, actually. There's a lot of white and brown, kind of, and it is a bit messy, but I think the back, for the most part, does look pretty cool. And here's the switch with the ticket as well, and the Sword of Fire spinning piece. Overall, the design of this monastery is quite amazing, and it really holds true to, to the show. One last thing I actually wanted to review, and on camera, and these things aren't actually exclusive to this set, are these little spajitsu sticks. I wanted to take a look at these on camera and show you how they work and share my thoughts on these. So pretty much the idea is that you put a ninja on them actually and they're like this. I like the handle of this as well and you hold them like this and it's, this is a tire piece. It's rubber actually so it will rub against the ground and it moves like this. I don't really know what the point of this but is but I think it is pretty cool. It appears in some other sets as well and I, yeah, again, I don't really know what the point of it ac actually is. I mean, I guess it's to make them look like they're doing spinjitsu. It does accomplish that pretty well, actually. But other than that, I don't know what the point of it really is. Like, is it for battle? Is it for something else? Either way, though, it does work pretty well. And now we're going to take a look at the minifigures. And oh my god, the value for this set is actually amazing. So this set comes with all six of the ninja, Wu, plus a skeleton, and I just think that deal is amazing. This set is only 75 US dollars, and that's that's pretty much the same price as the Temple of Resurrection, but the Temple of Resurrection does come with different minifigures, less minifigures, and, you know, less exclusive. It's not as valuable of a minifigure set, you know. This set has all six of the ninja, so you can easily knock out your ninja collection by just getting this set, and Wu as well, plus a skeleton minifigure. And I just think that is quite an amazing deal and really motivating to actually get the set. It could even be priced higher, but I, I'm not going to ask for that, you know. I think this price is really good and it's definitely worth getting a lot. I think it's really cool that it just includes all six of these ninja, so you can easily knock out all six of the ninja at, at once. We also have the Whiplash minifigure, who's, I guess you could say, an exclusive minifigure, but he kind of isn't considering that he's just made up of pieces from the other skeleton minifigures. Same head as Cruncha, same torso as Knuckle. Same armor as them as well. So, yeah, I mean, this isn't really an exclusive minifigure considering it's just made up of parts from other minifigures. But, I mean, it's fine, I guess. I think it's actually really cool that they did decide to, they did decide to include this skeleton minifigure. I mean, I think the ninja would have just been enough. But I really ought to say this value for the set is just amazing. And it's really worth buying. Whether you even consider the Spinjitsu Dojo to be the monastery or not, that is entirely up to you. But I would say that it is the closest thing to the monastery that we have gotten, and it's also called Spinjitsu Dojo as, Dojo as well. So on the right, we do have the Spinjitsu Dojo from 2011. It was my first Ninjago set, and it was pretty good for the most part. And on the left, we have the Monastery of Spinjitsu. And let me just add that the Monastery of Spinjitsu also looks really cool when the gate and the monastery itself are connected. They are designed so it just fits perfectly, and it works really well. Anyways, back on topic, these two sets are very, very different. The set on the left is actually extremely show accurate, and we will talk about accuracy in a minute. And then the one on the right is actually very, very inaccurate, so that is a major difference that you can just tell right off the bat. Now I want to talk about the arch above the gate in both of these, because that is something that these two sets do share in common. I actually like the arch above the original Spinjitsu Dojo just a little bit more, I think it's a bit more detailed, and it just has a bit more going on. But I really love the arch of the new monastery as well. It, I really like that golden gong that is, of course, show accurate, and I think that does look really cool. Of course, the doors on the new one are much better as well. Again, show accuracy, and much more detail as well, whereas the old doors are just plain molded doors, and that was definitely very different. 
Now, of course, these two sets are extremely different, but one theme that is prominent in both of these is the use of stickers that have symbols and just designs with symbols on them as well. So I think that is really cool in both of these sets. Now, we also have the shurikens of ice that came with the original set and would kind of, it, they would be behind the door. So that's very similar to the way in this new set where the shurikens of ice are behind the window. And, you know, that is one similarity. And again, the original one was more of a play set. There were play features, you can see in the right. There was this little um, shredder thingy where you would turn the gears and these swords would spin. So they were very different. And I don't even know if you can really say that this set was the monastery, but it is the closest thing that we've gotten to a monastery, and it was called the Spinjitsu Dojo. But, you know, there's no doubt about it, about this. The new set is certainly a major upgrade over this original one. And last but not least, I do want to talk about the accuracy. I don't normally talk about this in these legacy reviews, but the monastery is actually back in the show, and so this is definitely something I do want to talk about. What its accuracy is to the actual monastery. And I gotta say, this set is unbelievably show accurate. First things first, the outer gate, which is quite accurate. The new archway is pretty accurate for the most part, other than the red piece at the top, where the, whereas the arch is just completely black with those two little red pieces on the side. The arch on the set does capture that, and it does actually have that golden gong as well. So that is quite accurate. We also do have the doors, which are quite similar in the, in the sense that they do have those two golden stripes and those two golden objects that go up. The outer gate on the set is a bit show inaccurate, it does have these random red pillars, but for the most part it's no big deal and it is pretty accurate. And actually to the right, it's kind of cut off in this image, but there is that little tree that we do see. Um, it's right on the edge of the left picture, you can see that little tree, and that is actually there in the monastery. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, the actual monastery itself is pretty show accurate actually. You, There are those steps that lead up into that platform where Master Wu was sitting throughout the pilots when he told Kai he failed. And even just the back area that it's really accurate. You have these two windows and and you also have the thing at the top as well as those banners that stick out from the structure, from the tall part of the monastery. So it is really show accurate. The new monastery of Spinjitsu has really blown me away in the best way possible. This set is fabulous. It's really big. It captures every single detail from the show and it is priced at an amazing value. And I think it's just good in every single way. Definitely an amazing set and totally worth buying in every single way. And I would have to give this set a 5 out of 5. So that is the last Legacy set review of this wave. We'll be taking a look at the minifigures next. And then for the final video, we'll be ranking the sets of the wave. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this set review, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone ever you know. And I will see you next time.